Mr. Zahir. Mr. Zahir. I must sing for it. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. I love you. I know. Here's Johnny. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I see dead people. Milk was a bad choice. Oh, yeah. It's that time again, folks. How to be a movie snob with Seth Halligan and... Me, Mariah <laughs> Waller. Seven Samurai is a classic of classics. And I picked a whiskey because most people equate Seven Samurai to a Western. And they did so before it was remade into a Western. So my drink is a whiskey to give homage to the American cowboyism. Mm -hmm. And it's a Japanese whiskey because I feel like our director would appreciate that so much. Kurosawa, this is to you. <laughs> what for you, Kurosawa? Ah. So without further ado, let's get into Seven Samurai, a movie that was way more familiar than I expected it to be. Yeah. In so many ways, uh, but way longer than any of the other um, iterations or versions. But my goodness, it opened like a cultural like vault of like, oh, this explains so many things of why, why, why it goes. So let's first start off. What is the movie? Mariah, can you give us some sort of synopsis of this movie since you've <laughs> jumped into the synopsis several different ways from Sunday? Yeah. So there are some villagers in Japan, farmers, and they're tired of being ransacked and robbed by some bandits. Ah, the bandits. The bandits keep getting their crops <laughs> every year. And they're, you know, fed up. And so they... I'm like a bandit. They talk to their elder, an old man. Who can looks like... Who I thought was blind in the first scene, by the way. But then like just he opens just, his eyes later. He just opens yeah. them when he needs when to. When he needs to. It's... He's effect. thinking most of the time, and With then he own. opens yeah. his eyes when he's got something to say. But he suggests going to find some samurai to help them get rid of these bandits for good. That's right. And I and I just yeah, we'll get into more of that. So then, what happens after that? Do they get some people to help them? They do eventually. And they find a guy who guy. finds another guy. And then that guy finds a guy. And then they find. They find six. Three? They find six guys. Six guys. And, and one guy who really wants to be part really of the team. Really wants to be part of the team. Wants to hang out. But ironically enough, becomes like the most important piece of the whole freaking movie. But yeah. That's... And that makes seven. Hence the name Seven Samurai. Okay. Today's going to be a special episode. Usually we just call in a special guest person. In the middle for like one question, but we're gonna bring in Patrick Gillette for the whole thing. We do. I, I gave him the assignment. I said we're watching Seven Samurai. It's three and a half hours of your life that you will not get back, but you can talk with us. And he says I can give you an hour. And he's he still said yes. <laughs> and he still said yes, which is pure hilarity. Um, he must be bored up there. He just must not have any friends. Okay, it looks, says I'm already connected, so let's let's do this. Has he been listening this whole time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish it's like that. I'm sure you have friends. Pat. I'm sure. Oh, I don't. I don't care what everybody says. Pat, well, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you. We're glad to have you for a little longer this week, and this week should be a doozy. Uh, if it goes anything like the movie that we watched goes. Could be a long podcast. Um, it was not a short movie no. to the point where there was a built-in intermission. Mm -hmm. There was. I what, and, and you know, <laughs> you know, Monty Python: The Holy Grail has a fake intermission. Yes, which is brilliant. This uh, is a necessary, legit. Got to go to the bathroom because you're like, oh, uh, yeah. Black. Movies don't do that anymore because Kill Bill tried to, but they gave him the kibosh and made him make two movies. So yeah. The intermission's like, you know, like unless you're watching Ben-Hur, it's a very fun, old-school movie feel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, a treat. A treat. Yeah. Really well, is. even three hour three hour movies now, they just go deal with it. Definitely. Like, yeah. Which I don't. I haven't even seen. Was it The Irishman or whatever? I haven't seen it. Yet. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch that. I ain't got that time. I ain't got that kind of time. No. Unless it's there, you know, uh, greatest of all time, like this one. Yes. So, okay, Mariah has already given us the synopsis. And oh, yeah, I missed that. I know, I know. We were we we're so excited to talk about. <laughs> but it. you know that what the movie is about. You definitely know what the movie is about. I do, do. I. That's the question. Oh, so oh, then we'll jump in. You'll have a, we'll have a lot of fun here. So we're gonna go with a couple things here. Let's start off with like when you watched it. Let's talk about the kind of the feelings you had. So Mariah, you watched this. And you had the commentary of your mom telling you about Magnificent Seven the whole time. Was that going on simultaneously? Oh, was that after. after? Okay, okay. So tell, yeah, sitting down watching this, and I'll yeah, start us off and tell us kind of the feelings when you watch it for the first time. Um, you know, unlike a lot of three and a half hour movies, uh, <laughs> this one actually didn't take too long for me to get into. Oh, nice. Um, you know you. You're feeling for the people. You're, yeah, um, interested to see how they're gonna find these samurai. The, the street scenes where they're looking back and forth, <laughs> like at these guys walking the method, past them. Talk to that guy. The method of finding samurai. <laughs> Hit him with a stick as soon as he comes through the I doorway. Have lots of thoughts. So good. Lots of thoughts about. So good. Like, <laughs> what magical village did they go to where it's like, well, this is where all the samurai just walk through. This is Samurai and you just Boulevard. Just stare at him. Yeah, you just stare, <laughs> and then you'll decide we'll approach that samurai because he looks hungry. Like he might work for rice. Oh, yeah, so good. Yeah, and then they'll be offended, and it's just like, what? Yeah, is this? one of the first ones they see. He's walking down the street, and oh, he's eating rice. Don't talk to that guy. <laughs> he's, oh yeah, he's, he's well cl- fed. Right. He's clearly not hungry. He's a well-fed samurai. <laughs> he won't go for this. <laughs> Oh, that was very like, would this make more sense in the fifties? You know, people be like, Oh, well, of course. Oh, well you that know, this is where you'd find a samurai. Well, honestly, I, I did kind of have those like moments of like, where the heck was Japan in this moment? Like this is 10 years, less, less than 10 years after the war, like 1954. Yes. So we're talking like, but set a hundred years before. No, uh, more than a hundred. Fifteen hundred years. Yeah. Fifteen hundred. So five hundred years before. Yeah. So or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but thinking this, through this podcast is not about math <laughs> or dates. It's not a math <laughs> or it's not a math pod or a history pod. Okay. No. Let's, if we have a fact checks person, we're in trouble. <laughs> cut that. Cut that. Cut. Yeah. Uh, and cut. And we're back. <laughs> little. <laughs> Today's break has been sponsored by. You don't know Jack. Okay. No, the I keep thinking, how many people have known hunger within that, that moment? Like like that's this that's the, the, the hard part about this movie is like, yeah, they can imagine not having rice, which would be like yeah. our bread. Like it's just Well or what it's like to live off of millet or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had I thought I'm like millet's not millet's not too bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> like think through is that like a, like a like a hearty or oatmeal? Like I was thinking through what yeah, millet was. They were not pro millet. <laughs> no. Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, it's like the old stories of like um, the prisoners off of like the northeast part of America had to eat lobster all the time and they revolted because they hated <laughs> lobster. And now, oh, how things have changed. You guys eat kale? But sorry, we, we interrupted, we, we interrupted um, Mariah's. Feelings. Experience. My oh, feelings. Yeah, feelings. Oh, we're getting into my that. feelings get shut down a lot. <laughs> That's uh, going to be standard course. This Ryan. is not a feeling. Don't pod. think that this is oh, going to stop here. You've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about dates. There also were, and again, I'm interrupting Ryan. There were a lot of feelings. Mm-hmm. Strong oh, feelings. Man. In so the many in this yeah. movie. So many. You're oh. either sobbing. <laughs> laughing hysterically Sobbing uncontrollably or laughing hysterically yes or challenging or somebody serious. to a duel a and i yeah and i don't know if you guys oh know i i was struck with like what the acting uh goal was cuz it obviously wasn't naturalistic mhm 
and I, you know, again, I don't know where Japanese cinema was at the time, but it was like, you know, how, you know, there's a lot of exaggeration going on, but then some characters rang fairly true to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was very, it was hard to be like, okay. oh, is this good I, or bad? I got to tell you guys. So I actually, uh, confession time, I tried to watch this movie like three or four times before we picked it for the podcast. <laughs> and I literally fell asleep to it. I couldn't get past the farmers just crying <laughs> for whatever reason. Like they're just yeah. crying. <laughs> and it was just like, this is the, uh, this is so, and I, the village meeting, we're all just going to stop. Oh, just, it. yeah. Oh, was, and it, you know, the, the part that I was, I was kind of going in my head that like, Historically, there's probably that hopelessness for reals in so many villages. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's the heart. The, the thing is that we don't understand, like, and it's way harder. <laughs> the guy that's like, let's just let him come back and take our bar- barley and then hang ourselves. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, let's just let let's this happen. It. At least in the Magnificent Seven, they're like, we can buy the guns and shoot them ourselves. Yeah. But in feudal time Japan, mm-hmm. they know we have no chance to kill anybody. It's so hopeless. And I was like, good night. I am, I am not awake for this. And then I, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm heartless. Okay. So, so right. First scenes, what got you past? I, I, I fell asleep three times. What got you into it right away? <laughs> well, <laughs> just being real. <laughs> I read, I read the plot. Okay. You and know, you knew you had to watch it. I'd also had time. enough people ahead of time tell me how, how good it great was. it yeah. was. I had just had a conversation with my uncle and his wife oh, yeah. the weekend before and they said oh you have to watch seven samurai when i, I just said that. we're watching all these great movies that's so cool and that was the one they recommended and i thought well actually i think that's the next one yeah so i was really kind of and it's his birthday by the way happy birthday mick happy birthday mick happy hope birthday. you're drinking some irish <laughs> brew and some irish pub playing yeah. an irish song yeah I it's don't. irish not scottish right <laughs> Shoot. It's both. <laughs> oh, it's both. both. Yeah. But um we least it's not English. To both. You know what I'm saying? So I had <laughs> I had some high hopes, you know, for mm. it to get better. better. Okay. And yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing to wrap your head around in the beginning. I was like, is this just gonna be a sad old Yeah. <laughs> and and the crazy thing is I'm like Japanese culture and I'm very I've only my parents lived there for a short time and I visited a few times, but like is very like face it's the most face culture in the world. Like, so that's the irony. Like Germany is the least face culture in the world, meaning to say face is more important than life. And Germany's like, we don't care what you think of us. We just tell you the truth. <laughs> and Japan's like, we will do whatever so that people don't lose face, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and so when I see this, I'm like the farmers are so, it, it, it reminded me of, of, of moments in, in China where I lived, where it was like, we have people screaming and crying and yelling at each other, but then they will never confront someone on certain things that we would in America normally. So I was like, I was trying to like wrap my cultural brain around it and I had a hard time doing it because it's film. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like Japanese yeah. film is the opposite of what it would be in sometimes normal life to show what they're all feeling inside. Yeah. And so I had a hard time even... This just, is like their expression. Oh my gosh. I had I couldn't wrap my head. I'm like... I, uh, oh, uh, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if this was happening yeah, on the street, was... I'd be so uncomfortable I mean, right now. Well, I, and yes. they would be too. Well, yeah, and I would be, but I'd be, I would be like writing stuff down or something. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I'm writing a book off this, whatever this experience is. Cause I've seen like in, it's a weird thing about saving face. There's several ways to do it. Like I'm going to give it like a quick example in China. If, if, if two people get into a car wreck, you would not be both apologetic you would both be screaming at each other and you scream at each other as loud as you could so that everyone knows it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. Cause then if you're not screaming as much, right. then you'll, and then sometimes I've seen issues in Japan where they just out apologize each other, which is also, I've seen that in China as well for the same exact reason, but it's still to save face. But for us Americans and, and German and Irish born people, like it's hard to understand that. Cause it's like, it just looks like you're just screaming like whatever for, yeah. and it's a, it's a theatrical thing. And then, or which, you're, which, you're false apologizing, which no one believes you, but everyone knows you're mm-hmm. have to go through those motions. Which, which maybe jumps to the Manzo, uh, Chino 
yes. plot line by so the end. So good. So good. You know, jump ahead. Whoa. But, Slow yeah, your I, roll, baby. Hey, but you get points for actually I, uh, pronouncing their names correctly and remembering. So you're going to be all. You're oh, gonna be money, I, those are the easiest ones. I have. Yeah. I wrote down some, and I was like, "There is no way <laughs> I'm going to do this." Oh right. yeah. And okay. I thought Seth, we should make Seth pronounce everyone's name. <laughs> yeah, because my Japanese is so goes. great. I'm yeah. going to be doing a lot of that one guy that did this. Yes. Hey, that's that's fine. Okay, Mariah, what took yeah. the turn though? When were we like, "Holy crap, this is entertaining"? Because I, I there's a turn for me as well. And how long into it? <laughs> After Which the intermission. Hour? Yeah. Which hour was this? Yeah. I see. Well, when they're looking when they're looking for the samurai and they yeah, finally get the first guy. That was fun. That's I think that guy, you know, just kind of makes it, you know, his amusement at so many situations. And yeah. <clears throat> he's like the cool level headed guy and and you like him. He's insightful. He has a sense of humor. He's likable. He's very, very likable. He's probably the first person personality wise. Yes. You yes. Like. Yes. Because mm-hmm. you don't like the obnoxious I, guy until later. No, I know. Until think, later. Um, uh, I don't. I, they never say his name. The leader. Or I think it's Kambe or something. Yes. Um, he is over time. His presence is so striking over time yes and obviously he saves the little girl at the beginning like, oh, yeah okay. so you know who he's he like is. a brave guy yeah but otherwise it's like he's you know he's just there and then there's kind of the annoying young guy who wants to be a samurai mm-hmm. and okay. you're like what is this i know i'm you, you guys are i i want to jump and say my what my things are already because I, I have so many things well i mm-hmm. obviously I he's like stop He's no. the Ricky Nelson character from oh, the Western so, right. movies, the young guy that oh, everybody's like, oh, he's so annoying. <laughs> or <laughs> And he's definitely yeah, not a count. Somebody. I want to be a hero. You're like, yeah. Okay, you guys are missing the big one, though. So first of all, before I give you the big one, uh, my favorite thing about the lead character uh, is his head scratches. He oh, would when get, he's rubbing oh, his yeah. head. Oh, he, once, his head once rubbed. Once his hair started growing in. Oh, it was yes. great. It was and, a freshly shaved, you know, he wasn't mm-hmm. used to it. Of course oh, you're going to rub your head. But it was always a device for him to say, I'm thinking, or ooh. Yes. That's it. it was literally oh, like. You like, don't uh, think it's really, I'm like, just getting used to my haircut. <laughs> it felt like Kurosawa was like, rub your head, rub your head. It's like, and and, and for a long time. To be like, remember. Yeah. You have to. Think. It was a plot device, a hundred percent. You are a wise I man who rubs. I eventually liked it because I thought I would rub my head. I <laughs> rub my head now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, hair not unlike that. We do stuff that. Well, you guys know you have kids. I scratch my head, and you know why I know I scratch my head? Your son. Because my son thinks that everything is sign language because we're teaching him sign language and he repeats everything. So when he comes up to me. He scratches his head as if it is a hello, dad. Nice to see you. Yep. Yeah. So I got to deal. So I got to teach him something else cool. I'm like, no, we need to do something cooler than that. He's like, scratches his head. Dog got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to give my big reveal before Mariah gets her big two reveals because we all, re- the, the Magnificent we have Seven, reveals? We, we, have reveals. Have reveals. we have reveals. Insight. 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 Oh, you guys okay. are missing. Insight. Yes. The, you guys are missing the major movie that has taken so much from this movie. Yeah, the annoying. Well, we're not un- there, Seth. Are we not going there yet? Okay, I'll wait. Well, we're not. I'm not there, but I understand. All right, keep yeah, going. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Because you guys talk about yeah. the annoying underling and the annoying wise leader. Like, all of us who are Gen X, Gen Y kids, what is it, not Y, millennials, <laughs> don't even know the generations anymore. Like, all we can think about is Luke and Obi Wan. That's mm, all we can think about. Definitely annoying and and why? Like that's... this movie was George Lucas's favorite movie. Exactly right, and everything George Lucas is is so Japanese focused, and it's because he freaking loves this director. And so it's like, w- once I heard that, I didn't think about it during the movie, but once I heard like that connection, I'm like, everything about Star Wars is a ripoff of some aspect of one of his movies, mostly this movie. And it's yeah. so many ways. And so that blew my mind. And that was like, and it's not like exactly like some of the other movies that we're going to talk about, but that was like my, oh my goodness, this movie's ridiculous. I see, like you start to see the power and the influence because of when it came out and then what shortly came after it. And then what you realize is part of your vernacular, 
<laughs> without even realizing it. I, yeah, and I think going to your question to Mariah, the thing that struck me, because, you know, you start and you're like, oh, boy, like, this is an old movie. Right. And then you go, oh, okay, this is the overall plot structure for so many movies. Yes, right? You, exactly there's right. There's the the problem you seek the heroes you build the ragtag team you train mm -hmm. you know a, a, mm -hmm. a group of people there's the outsmarting the bad guy like it's just like you could overlay so many movies on oh, top yeah. of this and most of them are west like more most of them are point. westerns too yeah. yes many westerns many westerns but you know you could go like this is uh, uh oh, shoot yeah, right. you, you could go. So the one we're going to talk about a little bit, of course, Mariah, do you want to say? Magnificent Seven. And the Pixar classic. Oh, a Bug's Life. A Bug's Life. It's the same oh, freaking yes. movie. And so that's hilarious. Yes. Of course it is. That's go so great. Hero bugs. By the way, yeah. Mariah figured that out, not by looking stuff up like I did, but she just like. I didn't have to Google that one. That just came off of her brain. She's like, man, yeah. this seems a lot like <laughs> A Bug's Life, which then you look it up but like, I oh. They literally use yeah. this as the <laughs> template. I see now. Yeah. But then, but, you know, and going back to Star Wars, like Rogue One. Oh, know, yeah. This 100%. is a very, like, again, it, it, obviously it's not necessarily defending a village or whatever, but there's right. so many. And I wonder about that too. Any assembling yeah. of a ragtag group. Dances now. with True wolves, grit. Arguably, True grit. Yeah. Um, this is arguably Avatar. The, like the first action. The best movie, movie ever, Fern Gully. I mean, all of them. Like <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. Ocean's is a level at least they already were trained mm -hmm. then it's just couldn't together but like that's the question like was dances with wolves i don't know kevin i don't know if kevin costner had any influence of that but this was this the original version of the story like that's the crazy part is it really the first one it seems I like think it's it. the first cinematic one there we go there you go pat nice work you know Hero okay. of a Thousand Faces, you know, there's no new stories exactly. Hey, there we go. Get back to the Greeks. I mm. love it, Pat. Oh, stop it. You got so much culture. I can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. So, so, wise. so, so I'm going to. So much insight. I'm going to agree with Mariah <laughs> on the point where the movie was watchable. That was the freaking testing the samurai. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is kind of fun. <laughs> Just like shifting go... the eyes up and down the street. It's yeah. just hilarious. Oh, man. That was. <laughs> I, I So I took notes at nighttime. And I so my notes are all overlapping because I didn't know exactly where I was writing on the page. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, blind, blind note taking. I was like, why are so many samurai walking through the village? That's so good. That's... How long are they looking? It's yeah. a hub. You it's know? a hub for also, samurai. Also, our, our, our leads, you know, they shaved his head to save the girl. And then like, yeah. Shortly after, he had quite a bit of stubble going on. And mm -hmm. I thought, how long has it been that they're looking? <laughs> well, it and took, a, like took them a year to make days. the movie, so they did have time to grow yeah. out. Oh, they, my gosh. They said, they said at some point it was four or five days that they were, like, looking or something. And I thought, <laughs> oh, there we go. That's, that's weird. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I love that. But, again, I thought each of those – so we see, uh, you know – super swordsman guy strike down somebody yeah we see lead save the girl mm -hmm. we see one guy chopping not even wood. go into the barn yeah, yeah we the see wood chopping wood the best yeah it felt it felt like again with a modern lens you go this is the lamest version of assessing talent <laughs> <laughs> It ever. might not have been a big pool of talent at the time. And because even the first guy who like catches the wood, uh, you know, yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. he catches uh, what's what's his face. And he's like, that's the greatest swordsman ever. And it's like, he never used his sword. He caught you from hitting him on the head. What are you talking about? <laughs> they escalated all these people's like abilities so quickly. And it's like this guy chops wood hey, like nobody's hey, business. They don't have time. And the way he oh, and then the way he yelled like every samurai, like every joke that you've ever heard from the oh yeah, it was crazy. I was like oh yeah, yeah this is every. But, but again, I thought what did it was he like, say though? Yes, this is the same. It's the same plot structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you go oh, we would see this guy. Yeah. 
shooting down three dudes in a western. Yeah, right. right. And you go, and, oh, that guy's quite the quick draw. Yeah, and you got to think about you'd that see too. It, you'd see it more clearly than I think this movie did, but it was the structure was there. Mm-hmm. It's yes. like somehow we got to catch all these guys doing it. And honestly, in this little town walking down this one road. Who knows to where and where they're coming from. Right. But all samurai in Japan for hire are walking down this. It's village. the same scene as Ocean's Eleven where they're assessing all the talents when Linus. A hundred percent. It's the exact it same It just happened scene. to be in front of one hut. <laughs> where there are also three random. Let's just look outside of this barn yeah, we're sleeping those in. Those three randos <laughs> See that who walks are past. jerks the whole time was the weirdest yes. thing for me. I was like. They're so mean. And why are they the here? Super thick unibrow yes. guy who's yeah. super good at poker super or whatever pissed. he won money from. But and they're he, all new oh. basically the whole time. Dude, you guys saw and so much ass in that movie. So much male. There was a lot so of many ass. cheeks. Uh, a lot of man butt. And I, you know, I thought, good for you, movie. There's a lot of man butt. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was wondering why it was. This is ahead of its time. Yeah, they didn't do guy nudity until like this year. Again, I think that's where modern screenwriting would be like, these guys don't advance the plot, cut them out. Which, you know, again, it gets down to probably why we we wouldn't have a three and a half hour movie. Well, yeah, and, and need... you can't afford to have the guy talk yeah, that much. there would have been some more editing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's like, I don't know what those guys really brought other than to, like, beat down the villagers, which, again, it's like... Oh, they're so depressed actually, with them. Actually, though. speaking of, like, time, the other thing I thought was in a modern movie, you would see the bandits wreaking havoc, right? Like, that would be the first thing you'd see. Like, what is the right damage these guys can do? And apparently they filmed that. Mm-hmm. They filmed a version of the bandits raiding a village, and then Kurosawa was like, no, we shouldn't start there. And oh, thought, really? Interesting. Oh, that's so interesting, because yeah. a modern movie 100% would start on action. Well, and they did do that than, in Magnificent Seven. Right, right, right. Yes. They do do that. Not that only one. they do they do do they also <laughs> <laughs> they they also oh, yeah. get a main bad character mm-hmm. because that's the thing. Oh like, yeah. They, well, you do get the well, main. Guy. You do get the leader of the bandits in the There's beginning. There's horn guy and there is yeah, yeah horn guy. guy. But you don't like. He's the first one you see and he's the last one to go. Because I feel yeah. like Tombstone copied. The Magnificent Seven version, where they develop the bad guys just as well as the good guys, because mm-hmm. they want you to really, you know, lead into like why they're bad, and of course, um, yeah. Well, and build up, you... I think, their prowess, right? Like how scary they are, and I think all we had going in this movie was their numbers. So there's forty of them. Oh, I got yeah. so many questions, by the way. So many questions. <laughs> are um, we doing? How are we doing? I feel like I'm breaking your guys's flow no no no, no you're great because, you're adding to the because flow. honestly i just have so many questions so i'm just gonna go with pro- so let's questions. go with problems with the movies um that i never could figure uh, out talk let's talk uh, about I, yeah go go for it first before i, I go to that one of one of my first notes and i put exclamation points bald <laughs> i can't wait last night this was bald, a big deal bald caps bald <laughs> bald caps right those were clearly bald caps. <laughs> Why couldn't they just so have... many bald caps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally but it was fifteen hundreds Japan. I don't think they yeah, all shaved know. the top. Shoot, I don't know. At the time, uh, it uh, felt striking to me. Yeah, one that like it was this kind of weird. And again, I'm culturally ignorant. Oh, I thought same. I don't know what the look is here. I don't know what the goal is here. But <laughs> none of them seemed like real shaved heads outside of our lead. Yeah. Who looked amazing with a with he a shaved did look head. ba with a shaved well, head. Well, even man. some of the bald caps had grow out. I don't know if you, <laughs> did you notice that no, it wasn't yes. purely bald. That's some yeah, of them, like a weird. There's some a of them look. had some. Well, some were bald, and some actually looked like they were like growing out. But yeah. it was still it good. was a it was an odd choice. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I assume I, those actors just were like, I can't actually shave my head. <laughs> I'm not going to look caps. like this after. Yeah, in the 50s it probably wasn't cool. <laughs> and they're like, no way. Yeah, right? No, yeah. and it wasn't cool. That's Yeah, that's... so but Definitely you look at all those paintings from back in the 1500s. And they definitely did. And they sh- for sure I had, had those. I had those playing cards. I know. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, and it's not a bad look. Again, no. I you know I would not fault. I didn't fault the movie for having those styles. It felt like they half-assed it. Could have done a better like, job. Well, yeah. We're no. not really gonna. No, no, no. They full assed it and half headed it. Let's yeah. be honest here. <laughs> they didn't. I don't think they got any awards for the uh, costume design. This is true. Uh, okay. K- okay. K- Kichuri or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Kats, so Kats, let's. No, I can't remember. I am. I am jumping ahead so far just because I. Can't, I don't want to forget it. Go ahead. Uh, the wife of the villager who's with the bandits. Who ran back into the who fire? Ran back into the fire. <laughs> when she saw him. What is going on there? Was that it was, was it out of shame? Was it? Out I of shame? assume because yes. she had been so damaged by her experience. There we go. That's a that good. Okay, like, so that's what people I say. Can't, I can't confront you. I it's sure hope so. Better for me so. to die. I yeah. I hope that was a shame walk. But again, that's like not a modern. Yeah, thing. and it's very Japanese as well because you would like it's. She'd rather go back in there than face, which is crazy because like, it's like, oh, you rescued. Cause every, any Western would be like, oh, you rescued me. Yeah. And sure. I, I was taken advantage of and all the horrible things happened, but you saved me now. But you got more of the right. story before that when they're just watching her and she's just zoning out and yeah, looking well, she just got all like, giddy. Empty she's like, I'm inside. not going to warn anyone about this. Yeah. Fire. I'm going to let this mother burn. That's true. <laughs> oh my God. She was I damaged for did- sure. There was a weird, we lost some impact because um, Hubby, uh, I can't remember his name. Yep. uh, Main main farmer guy. Main farmer guy, yep. He wouldn't say anything about having a wife. Yeah, he just kept getting upset. There wasn't this clear buildup of like, his wife's been taken. No, I thought that was obvious. We need to rescue her. I thought that was obvious. I thought the wife had either been murdered, raped, or or, or captured. Sure, yeah. But, and so, so then when they didn't reunite, my Western brain went, what was the point of all that buildup? And having that whole scene right. by the campfire, and then they don't reunite, and she just runs back into the fire, and so to make yeah. to light that fire and give him the rage. I mean, honestly, to... and then for him to accidentally kill one of the other samurai. Yeah, he had a bad a weird flailing bad on the beach. <laughs> go, oh my oh gosh, boy. I was wondering. Yeah, it was that confused me one. too. I thought I couldn't tell if he accidentally killed the other samurai. Or if like yeah. it was it wounds. was his fault anyway. Yeah, yeah. Either way, because oh they gosh. were he was trying to contain him and he was flailing around and yeah. then again like it was very hard to tell with the effect oh. when that someone was actually stabbed or poked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But apparently that was a mortal wound. Yeah. When he shoved him oh, back. That's rough. Yeah. That's yeah. When rough. he fell onto the beach and you go ah. It was I mean, his they were fault. swinging around samurai swords. You know, it didn't seem safe. No. But yeah, I I felt like it lost some impact, even though that was like. That's crazy for someone to throw themselves back into a fire. Like, emotionally, that should have resonated way more. And then they're like, why are you freaking out? And it's like, that was my wife. And you yeah. go, <laughs> like, I think you knew this, Seth, because of modern, you know, because of pop culture. Like, that would make sense. But in the story of the movie, they didn't tell us this. No. In a way no, exactly right. where it would totally make sense. Because he honestly didn't even go after her that quickly. You figure it out well, as she's seeing him and going back in, but you're not really sure until that's already but happening. Remember, they have no power. So farmers having wives stolen from them is, I assume, normal par for the course. Like, oh, my yeah. wife's gone. They again. Took her with, Dang it. I with, the, ri- they took her with the rice. <sighs> Farmersonly.com. Uh, I got to get back on that. Uh, <laughs> speaking, again. speaking of kind of again i think the the format or the formula that kurosawa laid out was the idea of revealing backstory over time yeah. right we get to know all these people yeah and, it was and still... so um our broadest you know kukachio oh uh, yeah crazy guy crazy guy he had this like you know he was born a farmer and his family was killed the same they, thing we, we happened to was me. The na- we knew that was we coming. We knew it was a... F- yeah, and then, <laughs> and then honestly, that landed like a brick. It did. To me. I was so and bummed. I was like, but, everybody big but, crybabies the whole time. And he still until, does after oh, that, yeah. too. Finally, he still does after that, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was... That guy... He was told, go to 30. And he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I loved half of it. 
I yeah. hated him for so long. I was like, oh, why is he I... still here? Ugh. But he's the one who but gets... But sometimes it worked great. Yeah. He so... ended. He came back. It was okay. And... He had a line. Um, he had so fascinating. Lines, I'm not bored at all, I swear, <laughs> that I thought was fantastic. Oh, so good. There was so much great humor and so much, yes. like, oh, man, they were talking about, oh, you don't have balls and talking about like, yes so many things that in the 1950s i'm not picturing yes, there's not a lot just of in america sensibilities in not it. just in america but uh, certainly not in japan it's like oh so that's no. where we get these <laughs> sarcastic yeah. sayings well and i yes and the censors were not the same censors so let's talk about censors for a half a second because this is fascinating. i love this. i love talking about censors. yes yeah. i know you do beep I know. So first of all, so imagine you first are a filmmaker in the silent era pre-war. There's kind of mm-hmm. like no rules. I think his brother actually even went to um, boycott talking movies. Like mm-hmm. That's like how much they're into the talkies. The yeah, talkies, that's, right? That's not cinema. Um, no. And his, his, his brother, by the way, was a fascinating character. Uh, um, the, Is the, Kurosawa's brother? Kurosawa's brother. He uh, like was... There deep was a dive, um, deep dive. Oh shoot! Go. What was it? It was an earthquake. Um, this is a history pod. Yeah, history pod. Mm-hmm. Going back, <laughs> and his brother and he and Kurosawa wanted to look away, but his brother made him look. He's like, "No, you have to look now to see the reality because it's scarier if you look away than it is if you look at it." And then mm-hmm. that same brother is the one who committed suicide later. So a lot of Kurosawa's movies has this reflection of loss that. Yeah. Something he never. Yeah, it's it's so. It, his brother was a big influence to what he did in film. But thinking through, like this character, um, oh sorry, back to the censors. Sorry, I, I, the censors. First, you go before a Japan, but then you go into wartime Japan, which started way before we entered the war, obviously, because they went to war with China before World War Two mm-hmm. even began, right? So then they had censors, whether or not it felt too Western. So Kurosawa would awfully be um, accused of being too Western. Oh, then, interesting. Yeah, then he made some propaganda films, kind of like all of our <laughs> great directors made propaganda films during, the, during World War II yeah. as well. Um, and he was a, actually, he's a big fan of the director of uh, It's a Wonderful Life, Kurosawa was. He thought he was. Capra. Of Capra, yeah, exactly right. And so... Then, ten points. Ten for points for Mariah. <laughs> so points for Gryffindor. Uh, <laughs> Hufflepuff still behind. Oh. oh. Um. And so then, it, then they lose the war, and then it's the American censors, and the American censors say, "No, this is too Japanese, and it's not for you know free market enterprise or whatever, or you know dem- democratic or whatever." But then. When the movie came out, then the Japanese critics said it was too American. So, like, he's dealt with, like, both sides of the Living critics. Oh, my gosh, for his whole film career. And so then this movie was, like, his first, like, legit samurai movie where he can just, like, lean into old times. And, yeah, so his censor life is hilarious. But then, but you're right, the, so, so the censors of, like, foul language and humor are the least of his concerns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just a weird thing. Because, you know, there's no Hayes Code in Japan like there was yeah. in America. So, mm-hmm. no, it, it feels very, it feels more real than the Magnificent Seven, the way they talk. Yeah. Let's be real. And yeah. that was like five years later or six years later. Although, the yeah, Mag- I, yeah. I, I think that, you know, overall the dialogue was like fine. You know, yeah. always questionable what the, you know how, how the translator goes. does it and all that. Yeah, exactly right. But like it, you know, again, like the there's a couple lines where I thought like, oh, okay, like this is this is good. Yeah, right. the, for real, was, for real. The performances of it that felt either o- over or under, like well yeah. brought. I mean, honestly, we're just <laughs> brought the wailing, the. Yes. Uh, yeah, Kikuchi Chio. Oh, gosh, what? How do you say that name? Somebody help me. Oh, uh, let me let uh, me try it. I'll try it next time we try it. We're talking about the main. So, Kikuchiro. The f- yes. Yeah. 
the, he, the farmer turned but he also quasi samurai yes but he's also the one like getting all the kids to like him he's unapologetically brash oh yes he's everyone who can get everyone excited he's like he's he arguably is the reason why they even had a chance arguably Without him, yes, they never would have had a chance because the samurai would not have been able to connect with the farmers without him. So, one plus, one point of view could be like without him, he, they would have been nothing, which is yeah. a weird. So that's the irony. And that's, well, no, as a character, I actually, I think he's got a great arc. And again, I think, but his backstory landed. Yeah, uh, it, it, would, was it was it was a little in heavy. a modern movie. Exactly right. You would have been like, you would have had him cry. And then later reveal why were you crying so, or what or something like you would have just had but there's like, you know there's yeah. great pathos with his disdain for the farmers but he knew so much about them like which you be knew food. Yeah, exactly which is great. and all this great, great you know it's great stuff but you're like what is your deal man mm-hmm. and why are you here at all like what's your motivation yeah i guess still maybe questionable you tell everyone you're a samurai but yeah and you say you hate the samurai, but you really want to. And like, to think but he wouldn't talk to anybody at the beginning. Right. He was just weird. Yeah, Apparently, weird. that guy had a lot of improvisation in the movie, which doesn't surprise so me. So I okay, I this is I can't verify what I'm about to say, but <laughs> I'm not sure. It's not a facts pod. I, this isn't a facts pod, but I'm not sure if it was Takashi Shimura or Toshiro Mufeni. Mufeni? Mufeni. Anyways, the guy who played. Kikuchiro. Kikuchiro. Wow. <laughs> Kikuchiro. I'm like three drinks in and I'm still, I think I'm boy. pronouncing it better. Um, Seth opened some Japanese whiskey. It's so good, Pat. You got oh, right. that's on Suntory point. whiskey. We're sipping it out of sake cups. Uh, legit bought from Japan at the... It's Suntory time. At, Isn't that Bill Murray? At the samurai uh, market? Yes. Advertises. <laughs> it is. It's Suntory time. It's where you get the samurais. No, it's you know where I bought it from? The 100 yen store. You know how much 100 yen is? Mm-hmm. A, a dollar. dollar. It's I bought yen. it at the Dollar Tree <laughs> <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> cool. But yeah, Patrick, to go with the uh, um, translation and how well that worked, the Magnif- uh, Magnificent Seven verbatim has some of the same yeah, lines verbatim like it's amazing how similar and each and every character oh it's crazy the, it's crazy the part where he catches the fish he does that in exact magnificent seven too. exact same thing it's insane although he catches two fish in magnificent seven no a bunch, no, a bunch of, of them he only catches yeah. one and oh well, you gotta but they're all watching gotta... him in that one yeah, escalate. Yeah. But when he re- no, I, when he yeah, sounds the alarm, when they said he sounds the alarm, and they said who set off the alarm, and he goes, "It was me." And then he goes out and lectures all the villagers on yep. being chickens. Same thing Same happens in thing. Magnificent Seven. Can uh, we talk visuals? Oh yes, I was about to get into this, and you know I'm going to get into this because I, of course, thought about this from my perspective of like the beginning holy scene with crap. the horses. Well, I of course was thinking of the freaking fight scene in the rain with the yeah. seventeen different angles. Well, it's like three, but still, because this fool doesn't use one camera and then shoot multi-cam. All. He's a multi-cam guy. Not only is he a multi-cam One-on-one guy, first. he's using freaking telephoto lenses from far away. Yeah. So those shots yeah. of the horse's feet are the exact same time that's going on for the other stuff. You know what I thought of when yeah. I thought of, you know, using two or three cameras with a telephoto lens? Me on every single wedding day. <laughs> I was like, this fool is a wedding videographer, but he's making the best movies of all time. Maybe and you should incorporate more feet <laughs> in your videos. More horse hooves and more, more in the wipes. rain. Yeah. And way more your, wipes. Your and he, he invented the, the uh, wipe. He invented the yeah, wipe. Well, that's. Clearly, George Lucas is like, we got to put wipes in this. Exactly right. No, it, it, George Lucas's copying of him is insane. But the wipes, yeah. and then also, by the way, of all the great directors in history, how many of them edit their own films? Not a lot. Not a ton. None, except for him. I'm telling you, no. If you get any of he the did greatest not of all time, to share at all. He did not he, share. They, no, they're they're in the editing room. I'll this give you that. Movie. I'll give you that. 
But who is actually freaking cutting like Kurosawa? No one. No one's cutting like Kurosawa. <laughs> Coppola. Cutter. You know, he's 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 like probably, you know, has the cigarette burns from his cigarette. You know what I mean? Like it's it's him on it's him there on the the editing floor. Meanwhile, it's just Wait, he, so I I think this happened more in the early part of the movie. There was more like jump cuts where it did definitely feel like he filmed you know, it's probably two cameras at the same yes. shot and he just jump in tighter. Yes. And it felt very jarring to me. Like that's not like that. He broke rules. Yes. He broke modern <laughs> film rules. And you're like, he also why ma- did you do that? By the way, he also made modern film rules too. So yeah, it's, oh, hard. 100%. it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to go with that. It, it either, he either stopped doing it or I stopped caring in the, you know, the, the visuals of the movie, but it was, it was very jarring. Like I think, uh, keen example is the wind the first time we're at the mill yes and we keep just jumping in closer and closer to the mill and then yeah. somehow we're inside the mill and we're like well the the bedroom's not in the river like why are we zooming in closer <laughs> to the river and then oh. it's like well, old man but but aside from that i mean well one obviously the wipes influenced you know star wars like crazy but and there, the layout things, yeah. and blocking was amazing yeah like in every one of his shots every character was clearly placed to have their own you know little yes. space of of the film yep and he had a bunch of great tracking shots or uh, pan shots yes where it'd be like for the ability his, they his had back shot, then you're exactly right yeah, i i shot, literally was thinking like, how the striking. heck did he do this without a stanley kubrick you know, because I mean, it was still shaky as hell, but but yeah. it was like literally he's doing a half circle around the guy while he's talking. It's far away and he's getting different heads in the crowd shot. I'm like, that was so difficult in 1954. Like there, there's a shot when they start letting in bad guys one at a time. And mm-hmm. we're, we're sort of we get like a sort of an angle of the little bunker looking down the road and they let the guy in and then they kind of pan left and we, we wipe behind an obstacle and then it cuts to basically horse hooves running in the foreground. And I always goes to horse. Both of those are so like, it felt like watching a graphic novel. Like I felt like both of the shots were so well laid out. Uh, Good job. Pat. That's a good example right there. That's, that's why I bring you on here. Winner. It, it just like the movie felt storyboarded so precisely yes. in a way that I thought was very appealing. Yeah. And, so and so many people are gonna are referenced. Like there there was nobody there was no spot. It's certainly when all the characters were there. Right. Where there was dead space. Oh. There was always like oh yes. clearly Not... we're gonna move to the right to focus on this guy. Yes. Everybody can you know you get reactions from everybody. It was so well laid out. Yeah. So that not I this only is laid out. Great. Not only would laid out, but I will I will up you because what what Kurosawa does so well is the movement. He uses mm. rain with horse movements. He uses like two or three movements when most directors will use a ah movement. So yeah. what he does is has these crazy like the crowd will go one way, the horses will go one way, and the and the rain is coming down, mm-hmm. and so it's like this, 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 just tapestry of an image, every single time. And it's funny because I, when I started getting into like videography, I remember watching a film, and I didn't know it was Kurosawa because I didn't know who he was at the time. I was like, just I, I want to make a film to make money, right? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> the way he uses foreground and background movement in his every single shot. And the crazy part is when I watched Magnificent Seven, their setup was almost identical to the setup in Seven Samurais because it had the way that people came in and out of the same like hill in the back, mm-hmm. kind of sort of mm-hmm. like the the they're different kind of buildings, but still buildings here and yeah, there. Like it's it a just felt, different location. Oh, it felt so similar. Of, yeah. uh, and but yet but yet it didn't have the movement of the original seven samurais, the rain, the, the, sh- the people, the mm-hmm. horses, you know, it was just, yeah. and then the madness of those scenes. I can't, I, I would love to oh, know how many, people, how many people got hurt on that. 
Oh yeah, I mean, how many dead horses? <laughs> oh my, well, <laughs> oh yeah, well, the jabbing co- with all those spears. Although I would, you never saw impact, except for no. like the arrows. That that was where it was kind of this funny thing with when the villagers are chasing down these guys who fell off their horses. You're like, where's the killing blow? Mm-hmm. Because there they're just never jabbing. was. Because all it shows like is a crowd of villagers pretend... surrounding them with their sticks. You yeah. don't have to yeah, show it. Yeah, we could it. pretend any one of these is the killing blow. Oh, hundred yeah. percent of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, it or the like samurai just doing like a swipe while the horse is and going then all past. Like, fly off. <laughs> I guarantee nothing actually <laughs> happened there. Yeah. <laughs> so good. But he okay. got him. He got him. Okay, I got. Mm-hmm. I got a plot line. How's it playing twenty twenty two? The girl. Oh, I Let's can't see. wait to discuss this. To get oh, the one that gets my the bad haircut. Gosh, the great haircut. What was Amazing. her goal? What did she want? Uh, sh- okay, so drama. So I have... she was a high schooler for sure. Well, first of all, please, <laughs> you gotta play the game. Well, he was a high schooler too, right? Like he probably I don't know. For, probably. They're all forty. Yeah, she was. <laughs> She was 14. I just choked on my whiskey and you made she that comment. Was 14. <laughs> he was 19. So maturity-wise, similar. But he's already been impacted by the samurai, so he's trying really hard to be stoic. But he's dumb. But he's a dumb... Yeah, he's But dense. he's also never seen a woman no. in theory based off Well, why is she writhing on up? the ground? Yeah, what is her end goal? Her and end goal... I'm going to like a samurai. I'm going to sob like a samurai. And, sob and gyrate down here meaning, and you figure it out well the, meaning uh, assault thing? okay you're, <laughs> yeah you're right yeah. yeah no exactly I, I she has like a it literally she's was got a scene in her mind that's gonna happen yeah and i don't think it was it, 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 oh, I'm gonna is get... it even clear that when they walk out they've done anything because he, <laughs> did he actually do it because he's getting credit for he it he looked very guilty <laughs> And he looked a little relaxed. Something I'll be happened. honest. Yeah, he, he was either guilty. And you don't need that much time. Right I mean, really, home. how much time right. you need I for love, the first time? I love the wise man's joke about. Well, so you're good. a man now. Oh, I know. We need to let. Oh the yeah, mood. we gotta loosen up these men. So good. So let's give. Let's give the young guy a hard time. <laughs> Make it, laugh. it was pretty great, actually. Because there it was, was like, so much comic relief. Oh, it was. It was. Oh. It was but good. yeah. So. Okay. Let's. So, yeah. Let's jump in. What's interesting to me. some thoughts. Is well, one, I you guys explain to me what she wanted out of life because I don't know, but I thought it was it was very modern the reaction to it from everybody but her dad, yeah, and even him, honestly, that's that could be modern, right? You could put that could be any oh, drunk sure, depends on the guy, and he's like, ah, you slut. So like yeah. that was modern, and too, the but language I, I was he used by, like, to her was it so modern. Yes, but I was more surprised by how everyone else reacted. Like they're young, they're in love. Who cares? Yeah, can't you be We're happy about for to them? die tomorrow anyway? Like, yeah, yeah, yes. that was like that was Whoa, very modern. We're I was all... very surprised. There was okay. some with this in this yeah. time. It was modern. I agree with you. For I sure. was very pleasantly surprised by the whole situation. Hey, we busted out the sake tonight. I'm All like, bets are off. Yes. This yeah, is literally. like the purge. We're and gonna these guys do what are we do. Teenagers. We could all be slaughtered <laughs> tomorrow. Like it's a free for all. It's even it's... the samurai are drinking the sake. Oh my gosh! Except for the one guy. Well, yeah. Obviously, you gotta have the one. You gotta guy. have the one guy. I felt like he should have had a Bible in his hand or something, something like or a or a Shinto something. Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I I I was I was very shocked with how that played out overall yes and she just didn't but again, get up i was super confused <laughs> well she wanted her in general i guess so but she was trying to play her angles and i think well it was she also was like trying to empower him in a weird effed up way it to say work. no i i agree like i i i think yeah, she was like, it felt like it emasculated him mm-hmm. right but she was Somehow, trying she was trying to corrupted right exactly right but she was trying to say you're a samurai do what a samurai does be a man and throw that whole dramatic thing after her father finds them 
and he, it just keeps going back to him standing sideways right. with his head held down. Oh, that was down. so interesting to me. It was like, oh man, this angle is very... It's so ashamed. Yeah, like and we could shame. not explain this any other and, way. And the crazy thing is like, in a, in a Western, you're like, why doesn't the dude defend the girl from the dad? And he would in a Western. Oh, in a Western, right? Right. But, he, but, so he, doesn't, but yeah. he doesn't have the right in this culture. But you know who does? The old samurai. He can do what he yeah. wants because you know what he has more respect than the father. He's the yeah. only one in that scene who can do whatever the hell he wants because he has more respect than the father. He has more social standing because the the guy the the young he's kid Obi Wan Kenobi exactly right. The young kid has more social standing than the father, but the father is older, so then the father gets mm. to do stuff over the son. So it's it's always like I keep thinking about like. Like in English, we're so limited to the understanding because we say like, oh, hey, hey, sir. But really, you're saying older, sir, or younger, sir, with every Japanese word and Chinese word in Jap- yep. Korean word. Mm. Like, you so know, respect or not. you know, your status, you know, your place, you know, your rank. By the language that is used every single time. And that's the other thing that came through, which was so hard to understand, the farmer samurai dynamic of everything. Because the weird part about that would have been socially breaking the norms of 1500s because 1954 is so much more advanced than the 1500s of when it happened. So ironically enough, it was probably not to the signs of the times, but to the signs of the 50s. Mm-hmm. That they said those things because it was like, oh, it's okay to have different, you know, statuses. But they were just breaking their own statuses as of recent. Well, since- and I, again, going back to like, you know, what what was going on <laughs> in general. Right. They, they had Manzo, I think that was the dad. Mm. freak out yeah. and be like I have to cut my daughter's hair and dress yeah, yeah, her yeah. like a boy oh. because the samurai are coming Yeah, there was yeah. no nothing else happening in the village forget along about, those same lines forget about the bandits coming yeah and so yeah, it was this point. kind of we odd have, like we have samurai is coming this, is this does everyone think this because only you know again our uh, I can't remember his name it was you know, only him guy. and the guys that he was they, the only guy who was asking about women he was the only one that was convincing people to sleep across the bridge take the women across there so that they weren't going to be in contact yeah, but yeah but and even he was like let me harvest for you so you can spend some time with me right that was great it it didn't feel like we had established that the generic samurai takes advantage of women in villages to the point where this father is right to that's that's you know crazy. hide her stereotype like and so samurai. it felt <laughs> it felt like a very weird subplot because okay. there was nothing again in 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 the in the movie itself maybe that's again, why they were any external context it was like what is the fear here yeah. so okay so because th- no one in the movie i think is, talking is, about, yes. i think the fear is fear i think this, no we're so, so afraid of everything okay the but problem we didn't establish yeah. that this was a justifiable fear so but these are the special samurai that we selected on yes, the street exactly we chose right. not to pick we the get ones. the stick test pat yeah. come yeah. on Okay, so They're let's not a salty. So no, let's talk about no. samurai in general. Right now, we idolize samurai like they're freaking Obi Wan Kenobi. Like we do. Like uh, samurai is like supposed to be this higher. Well, Tom Cruise is a samurai. So I mean, know. obviously, and he's right. the great white were savior. They, were they celibate and the great just warriors the last, back in the fifties? The, the, the last one. The last. The last samurai. I'm like, how the hell is the last samurai white and a Scientologist? Anyways, so. <laughs> So many more questions. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> so the samurai historically were more akin. Uh, I'm going to get murdered for this to thugs than they were to this noble Jedi race. Well, it's it, especially at this time. 
So, which was like all these guys are essentially Ronin, right? They yes, masters, no masters, right? exactly right. Nice job. We'll and pull so that they're out. not fighting right. for any specific. So there's no accountability. No accountability. Bunch there. of Han Solos walking around, freaking shooting Han first, <laughs> shooting first at every like canteen <laughs> they can get to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, yes, that. So this I, is again, a problem. We didn't. We didn't we don't we didn't establish these things. No, but the but I wonder in 1950s Japan, was samurai like the sexy thing we see in America today? Because literally, when we see samurai, we think about a noble knight. Or were they the from riffraff Japan. that, that but, or dad were they, thought they were? Right, but then in in Jap- in an, what's the anime movie? Uh, Princess Monoroku. Mm. The samurai oh, okay. are just a bunch of thugs who are after some poor villagers. So right. I do wonder if it's a cultural thing, especially back then. If we have taken them. We have it. romanticized it, much like Gong Fu and whatever else. It's no, it, samurai did not mean like people, because like we think about like noble Galahad and King Arthur who would dare not, you know, but in Disgrace reality, a woman. But they really, were cowboys who were exactly right. They're dirty cowboys doing what they're gonna do. Exactly right. So I think that it's our Western perception of samurai that doesn't let us live in that same world. But really, they're just a bunch of big ass thugs who are got Dif- paid to kill people. Different outfit. Right. Exactly right. Well, and what what's interesting is they touched slightly on the kind of farmer samurai antagonism by having all yes. the armor which was great that, that was my next question samurai yeah. but it but it, it to me it just didn't it didn't overlap with that storyline in a way that i think no again, and i wish in they modern sensibilities it out they would have been like hey guys this isn't connecting so did you so, watch yeah maybe it was more oh, obvious I, in, in 1954 did they for talk, audiences than right. it is today because i had no clue what was going on there i'm like why are they why are the samurai so pissed so pissed that they said wasn't it like the stoic guy who said let's kill them all like, uh it wasn't the leader but yes it was it was the stoic the, guy though it was the guy who doesn't say anything yeah, that, He's like i want to kill them all i'm like yes, holy the crap got the that basket. The 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 yeah, gravity right. of that is huge, and it's like right. what what riff is going on here? So there's a lot of like, is it a, like a Romeo and Juliet thing with the 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 farmer's daughter? Yeah, it's this and uneasy the, partnership, right? So no, but that yeah, was confusing. to me. It felt more like the issue was financial, right? Like right. what do they have to pay samurai? But there's also this thing that kind of crops up midway hour one and a half where you go oh, <laughs> midway farmers you know sometimes kill samurai or at when least when they get a chance har- exa- or, or pick them off or steal their stuff or whatever something yeah. where the, you know where it's like you know we're not all on the up and up it, it yeah i i do think though to your point about romanticizing the samurai this movie does that Oh, this, this is, is a big reason. No, no, this no. movie is a huge reason why. This is the template for it. This is literally in the context the template of the movie, for it. These are nothing but noble samurai, basically. Like but, we only run into like one who's like, I'm not going to do that. So before this, and samurai were not. Re, 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 so my, I guess our thesis would be before this movie, samurai were not romanticized. We, I, I have no data to back that up. But this movie literally romanticized samurai to the point of Jedi. Certainly for Western audiences. Right? Right. Exactly right. Like, this is the template that I see everything from Belushi's impression of SNL samurai. The unlikable guy who's a hero. And then samurai Samurai Deli. Yes, thank you. Thank you. There we go. To every, like, oh, he's a samurai. It's very high noble, but but the, the, which is which is a hundred percent the Jedi, exactly right. right. The wandering Jedi, <laughs> exactly you right. Come across them; they're rare and yeah. they're noble. And I think and, we yes. can't separate the two. I think in our our Western cinematic brain, we cannot separate the Jedi and the samurai. Yeah, and I I think I'm lacking some of the cultural understanding where 
I need more of that spelled out to me in this movie. Um, sure. Ahead of time to sure. be like, okay, these, and that's a you good know, there's, point. It's a complicated history between these yes. two and societies. I feel this movie plays so well because even without having any cultural background or knowledge, it still plays pretty great. I yeah. Wonder, I wonder how much the fact that Magnificent Seven is so close. Oh, it's so close. And it's so, so prolific. Close, if that has made it convoluted to it, us it over be. the years, like the reason we identify samurai in such a way or um, westerns in general or, you know, it's because this movie was exactly the same. Exactly. Well, I did. Uh, Kurosawa is credited as a writer for Magnificent Seven. He should be because should verbatim, be. there are some lines out of that. The last uh, line of the movie, but... the last line of the movie is, you know, we can't take credit for this. We lost, but the, oh, yeah. the farmers won. It's, so in the, it's at the end of both movies. It's so yeah. good. I actually, I actually kind of wished the movie ended with once more we survive and then you know they fade it out yeah i I liked that i liked that and then and then they fade it up and they're just dancing and doing like a weird planting song yeah because they're like i thought we were i thought we were gonna die but we didn't yeah (laughs) yeah and then and then they gave credit yeah here we are again they should have made a sequel like magnificent seven made 12 of them (laughs) yeah it's also crazy. I mean, Magnificent Seven came out six years after this. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, six years. We're kind of used to importing movies now. Um, like that's just a thing, right? If anything's popular in Japan or something, we'll remake it, or you know, sure. Netherlands, where, wherever, or Hong anything Kong. good yeah, somewhere yeah, else, yeah. we will we will remake it in America. Um, I didn't realize that was. I didn't realize how quickly that happened he, in this context. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they so, must have started production on that only a few years after it, this came out. But, uh, yes. And the director was a Kurosawa fan, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, it, when Magnificent Seven came out, it got mixed reviews, except for one review that mattered. Kurosawa loved Magnificent Seven. Oh, nice. It won the Silver Lion Award at the Venice Film oh, Festival. Very growl. Very gur, baby. Very gur. So it, you know, it got a BAFTA <laughs> detour. Okay, go. What what a face on Yohei, the character Yohei. What yeah, yeah. a face on that guy. Am I right? Mm. The, the just gawking, open mouth. Oh, especially yes. that sack. especially after he speared that oh, guy. Oh my gosh! I don't. Well, I guess he still had the spear in him when he was making that face, right? Yo, hey, and man. They're like, hey, take it out, and yeah, like, what's your deal? What <laughs> you are you killed, staring dog. at? The guy you just killed. There were some intense feelings in that guy. Except he didn't. He just had the one feeling of like cowering. Oh, it's just the one face. Timid just old like, man. Really, am I supposed to do this? Are we really doing this? But man, it was a good face to have for him. This is the guy that would hide every time the guy got the stick out, right? Like, oh, he's yeah. going to come in. I'm going to go hide behind this exactly right. stable yeah. area. And then, but then his arc was he held his post. At the end, he did know? finally hold his post. And that was that was great actually. That was a very good arc. Yep. Oh, here's a here's a here's a question. Yeah. When when Uber bad guy mm. you know, was hiding in the barn and he shot our uh yes you know stoic oh my swordsman. gosh the ba yeah everyone we liked and he's like quieter you're next i had again this is like too too many other movies i had the thought that the women would all get stab. him like yes they'd, they'd be like how dare you yes we're gonna take this opportunity that didn't happen no i was, <laughs> I was a little bit patrick disappointed I was, with that i was trying to finish the movie and i was starting to get interrupted by people and i had to rewind a few times because i didn't remember what or i didn't catch what happened to that guy once he got into the barn yeah and i was like oh some who got him because you know it does end i was like okay yeah. And I was hoping that when I would rewind that he'd be mobbed by the women that he went into the barn. But no. Yeah, that was disappointing. I was really hoping that 
plot was yeah. going to land on that. But apparently only then, the male farmers were winners in the yeah, end. Yeah, only they can kill people. Yeah. And and then the other thing that I shouldn't you know pay too close attention to, because every movie basically ruins this. The So the musket shots. <laughs> how rapidly people were firing with a musket. Yeah. Although, thought, and I, hitting how people. How do you reload these muskets? The aim how could not have been that good muskets? either. Oh, except for when what's his name was jumping around asking try, like and and they never hit him yeah slapping his butt slapping his butt so good well and he got shot in the stomach point blank at the end but he i thought did. like how, and guess how what his, is this guy reloading and of course his final scene was just a pan of his ass <laughs> pulling oh, yeah. away it was just his butt that's, that's all you saw old choice bold choice <laughs> old like, choice there Apparently, of all that, we'd get... end with a big wedgie. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize he had to take his pants off to become a bandit. But apparently, uh, they he... honestly they didn't have as much pants as everybody else. Did you see? Was no. there any male genitalia in this movie? No, there was no female. There was the... only butt cheeks. Man, it seemed like it was close. I'm not I... Yeah. I kept wondering. I mean, there's some shots where I thought I was like, "There's got to be some was that front privates." I think it's they were be. adequately diapered in the front. Wow, because it yeah. was so close. It was just very thongy. banana. I mean, banana don't, hammocked. Don't get me wrong. This is sumo culture, so they they know how to cover what needs to be covered and uncover everything else. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, no, that was that whole scene. I lost track of the bad guys. I thought there was two guys in this in the barn with the there was I thought so the, too. the eye patch guy yeah, yeah. and then the and other guy got away and i thought they and then the guy's like no we killed them all i'm like no nah, dog i know you and got thought, one no, more one that's more. why there's eye patch guy yeah oh my god i was really unclear Second about what in happened command is out there yeah. i'm so glad that no, you guys thought that too because I, I watched that i'm like everyone's dead i'm like i don't think maybe so. they really were sending and it up I for a sequel he was gonna kill somebody yeah yeah me too i was like oh was great like, oh, now the old guy's dead one more guy exactly, yes, exactly. right uh but oh no they, they killed head guy yeah he killed uh, head guy but yeah that, but they were both in the barn and the first yep. guy backed out first and then he was just gone we never saw what happened to him no exactly right so i don't know but Lucent they didn't develop. Bottles. But I, I don't feel like they developed the bad guys enough, like they would in a modern movie either. So there's that too. No, no, we there wasn't well, that yeah. kind of character development. <clears throat> okay, let's let's do this again. Now. So let's let's bring We're doing us it to, again. We have to start over. Let's okay. let's start over. This I'm uncomfortable I'm with un- how we have progressed here. <laughs> would you suggest let's people to again. watch this movie in 2022? Or three, since who knows when this podcast is coming out? <laughs> Will it ever come out? Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, comfortable to be with determined. it like this. Yeah. Um, if there's so many remakes, would you suggest someone to watch a remake in their own culture? Because I pro- they probably have a remake in every freaking culture right now, or watch the original. I think since Magnificent Seven was remade in 2016. Yeah, it was yeah, with Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt. Right. I think that it Anton is. Anton Fuqua, right? Did yeah. you see it? Did it suck? Was it good? I, I haven't seen that one yet. It I was fine. To. I watched it. It was, you know, you got Ethan Hawke and Denzel. And... Dude, you got great cast. It should have. The yeah. cast was amazing. It was like, yeah, it was like fine. an homage. You know, do you need to watch it? No. No, but but, it was but if people did see that with and that they, many people, it still sucked. It yeah. was not. It's fine. It's, that's, but if that's, people saw that and lose. said that was good, and everyone's saying you should really you should really watch the 1960 version, I think you always should go beyond that and saying no, you need to see Seven Samurai first. Interest, yeah. Because yes, Magnificent Seven is great. But the reason it exists and oh all gosh. of these other genres, all of these other movies are here because of this. So I was uh, I was at the driving range with a friend playing to him some of the stuff. And I think what's compelling and the reason I would recommend people watch it is to understand the source of all these tropes now that we see. Uh, that's I mean, and, yes. and how fascinating it is to see the original version. Yeah. They made a version know. that was 50 minutes shorter, 5-0. That probably, 
would have been probably perfect. Like that more. But it, <laughs> Did it, that was, was it the, off the front. Because <laughs> that been right? helpful. Let's cut those farmers out. They need to press the hell out of me. It took over an hour to assemble the samurai. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there didn't necessarily need to be that many rejects walking up and down the street. But the to establish the plight and assemble seven samurai. I wonder how many. St- it took over an hour. How many? How many stick entrances did it take in the first cut, even to knock it down to the three that they, they actually had? And they got rid of the bad guy scenes. That's yeah. the best part about it. Well, and then and then it took ten minutes for the final fight. Yeah. That was that was, that was the rough. set. I was like, that "Really? Was We're running out of time There's here." Suddenly, I'm minutes? suddenly I'm panicking at hour three. Like, when no, is this legit, gonna go down? I, I, I agree because I was like looking at my timeline. I'm like, I've gone through 99 percent of this movie. They did it all in the curious, rain and the somebody... mud, though. How many minutes oh, of yeah, good could they have gotten? But they did so good I mean, with what they had. A lot. But I <laughs> I would be curious if you remapped kind of the you know different sections of the script or the plot and you're like okay samurai seven samurai took this long to get to plot point you know a b c d right right and then magnificent seven was this and then you keep modernizing that what would you suggest for a not a millennial a gen z to watch what are those years now so Uh, after us yeah after you because you're 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 millennial you're like a you're like an old millennial. I'm an ex. Are they? Right? You're a young ex. I'm the last. Well, here's year I ex. think. I'm the last. Here's year ex. depends on what you had to do it. We're exennials. Whatever. Here's the issue. Okay. Are they? Are they film literate? Yeah, if they're at all film interested, they would care. They to have. Know. To, if you want to be a snob, which is the whole point of this podcast, yeah. you gotta watch <laughs> the original. Yes, a hundred percent. You and got it, for to. anyone who has any film sensibility in that way, I'd be like, watch Mac, or you know, watch Seven Samurai. Okay, because everything else will make more sense. And I'm going to like, throw ah, my wife. I'm going to throw my wife but, under the bus. What do you tell Megan? She's a Gen X annual. And is it like who likes I just Hallmark? Want to enjoy who a likes movie Hallmark like movies for Christmas? She don't and watch I'd probably be like, watch the newest one. Yeah, with Chris Pratt. And she probably wouldn't like that one that much. No, that's true. That's true. That that's the thing about this. This is legit. If you like any of them, you but like probably all of them. My mom and your mom would love the Yule Brenner version. My mom does love the Yule Brenner. And she so does put my it mom. on as soon as we started talking about it. It's so good. It's so good. And I realized I'd seen it a couple times. Yeah. I didn't know I'd seen it so I think, many times. I think most people I'm related to really like that movie. I'm so impressed with your uncle who knows the original over the Magnificent Seven because he's not not necessarily not over, but I'm sure he watched Magnificent Seven enough to know where it came from. Yeah, and of course watched it. Okay, because... there's also some cachet being able to just say, but you gotta watch Seven Sam, right? right? Like oh, now it's we so all legit. have that. But oh, it's when so I, good. Be right. Like, but when I'm I so did, glad we uh, we did this. When I told him we were doing this podcast on movies, he and Tony both said, "You've got to watch Seven Samurai. That's, FNA, dude, that should be on the great. list." And I said, "It is on the list, and I think it's thanks next. to yours truly, by yeah, the way, because he bumped the French one. The be- the French one's coming because I'm excited for the French one. Actually, okay. Pat, there's a French one. There's a uh, we oh good we oui, we. Oui. There's Italian, French, and Japanese. Apparently, the Italian, the French, and the Japanese kick butt in the French in the cinema era. I don't know what's going on for sure. I've heard this. I've heard this as well. But yeah, I, I, I think there's a. I got honestly a lot of enjoyment because the 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 first twenty minutes or so of this are a slog. I would oh, say. Rough. <laughs> Just of, cut it. Just cut it all out. You're like, yeah. what are we watching? We what could is make even this happening? We could easily make this three hours. <laughs> yeah, like the whole village is sobbing at each other. I oh, do like the scene no, where they say, "Let's you. let them come back, and then I'll hang myself after." But that doesn't have to take twenty minutes <laughs> that to say needs that. To be inserted. it doesn't need to take twenty minutes to say that. And a minute yeah. long open Nor eye guy. Nor do you guy. need to be in a barn for like twenty minutes. Also, like they had two versions of them being woe is me. What was me in the village? Word. What was me in the barn? Pick the better version like, oh, and stick true. with it. Trim it down. 
Sherman one, one, one would have been good. I oh. could tell. I could. Anyway. I'm gonna edit the first 45 minutes for oh, everyone. You could okay, edit guys. The hell out of this movie. Mm -hmm. Last. That's the Seth project. Last. Oh, wait, wait. Th I thought about that by the way. Last thought. But no, I go. I, uh, okay, this now has me last. I don't know if it is. Okay, go. But I was gonna say. Okay. The joy of the movie was seeing all the connective tissue of every movie I've seen after. This right? is a good. Or no, I, that's good. That's like, a very that good last was, thought. That's a that very good That was what was thought. so compelling to me. I agree. Even it was... though it was three and a half hours, I thought like, oh, this is literally the building blocks of almost every action movie I've seen in my whole life. It was right? really go... fun to watch Magnificent Seven right after. I, just I have totally to say, agree. I was if you I was back to back enthralled these, with it with yeah. Magnificent Seven. I was like, like, it's the same. Holy crap! This is the same movie. The same guys here. And if, he said the same. And thing. if we watched Bugs Life after that, we'd yeah. be like, if this is again the same yeah. movie. I'm watching Bugs Life tomorrow. I'm watching it right now. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't even listened to y'all. <laughs> simultaneously watching. So that's yeah, off in the corner the watching a Bugs Life. <laughs> And in terms of recommending it, it, I think it does have to get to if you if you care about the history of film. Yes, you have to yes, watch you this. have like, to watch this. This is this is Citizen Kane esque. Yes, I it's, would recommend it as if, much as Citizen if you Kane. would watch Citizen Kane, you should watch this. Yes, is Agreed. that fair? Agreed. Do we agree with that? Yeah, and and I think just vis purely visually, just seeing mm -hmm. screenshots of this movie are striking. Where I thought this is so well laid out like the storyboarding of it you'd be like this is fantastic yeah um and so i think there, there's plenty to get from it maybe not acting maybe not pacing i but see like, and i'll disagree the foundation well, of the, all of it depends is like, on the actor what, depends on the actor what yeah yeah oh for sure and again i did you guys find and i know this is not a last thought anymore yeah. when our lead when our lead smiled, did you guys smile? Oh, hundred percent. I he wanted, I wanted to oh, leave him. Oh my gosh! I, I was the, like, turn the wedgie diaper wearing pants off of I me. I was like, I was, I. You're my father. I don't even know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Good lord, did I want to please that man? And he, when was, he was happy. Takashi Shamira. He was. Way what more do you charming want? Than Yul I will Brenner do it. Even. And Yul Brenner is a charming fellow. But yeah, I think yeah. he beat him. I, I gotta I, give, yeah, and I would say Takashi Shimura would be better than Yul Brenner because Yul Brenner because he's actually Japanese. Exactly and Yul right. Yul Brenner is, is not, not actually American. Actually <laughs> yeah. American, and Yul Brenner, I gotta give him credit. He dealt with so much racist crap in his career. Mm. Like he, oh my gosh, he's but he's quite charming. Oh, he's amazing. But he and he can play any role ever. Even as the king of Siam. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. Robot. You are now Siam. You were. You were. Yeah. That, I was I'm happy you guys made me do that, even though the timing of it wasn't three and, oh, and a half hours. It, it was never so is. long. Yeah. Oh, it was a long time. I did it today so during the day. I did it yeah, over I did, like I did Dottie was over for a play date. Dottie was over for a play date today and I was starting to watch it. Yeah, she was like, loved you it. guys have fun. <laughs> Your dad's <laughs> made me watch so some much. old ass movie. Nobody even checked on me. No one cared. Yeah, it is that could be descriptive. It's an old ass, ass movie. <laughs> old Japanese ass movie. Mm -hmm. So much of Japanese. But no, it's great. Movie. I I much appreciate the uh the assignment yeah yeah oh, no i i was it. super grateful and Pat we and there's so many more things we could jump into because like takira takashi shamira was an amazing actor mm -hmm. that was arguably um and i i can't find the source to, to was was marlon brando before marlon brando he was easily the most naturalistic yes. yeah and i think part of that was just being subdued yeah Yes, and again, which I is, think, you know, everyone did what they were his, asked to do. Read it in his face, not in his... You know, Toshiro Mifune, you know, Kikuchi... Uh, <laughs> I can't say that name. But he, he... I guarantee he was asked to just go big, and he did. But he was I sexy. He, Have you seen a picture of him? 
He's a sexy oh, yeah. he's a mofo. He's a good looking dude. The wise man. There were the shots where man. I thought, like, no, the oh, crazy the man's a good looking guy. guy. The mm-hmm. crazy then, guy is the again. best looking guy in the film. I'm going to have to check it out. Here, no, look at this picture of no, him Seth's right here. Seth's got him right on his laptop. Right it's here. a screensaver. <laughs> Why is he in a bikini? Yeah. He's very good looking. <laughs> he's in a, He wasn't in a diaper for most of the movie. No, but he's an incredibly attractive man. Like he's very the, attractive. The the guy who played the crazy guy was the best looking guy in the film. Ironically you enough, you just wouldn't know. And not then, the unibrow guy. And not the <laughs> <laughs> squatting on the floor. Close second. Or, Close or second. Yeah. yeah, you never know though because with those crazy outfits they did. Yeah. And and oh, it, it I just can't get over. The state of Japan and the amaziness of this movie. Yeah. I just that can't get over that. The I just, of yeah, if you think about what's I yeah. just can't get over that. The well historical, done Japan. A hundred percent. Like this is why Nike like Japan's recovery and don't get me wrong, America was part of that recovery. But they were like, you know what? We've lost that's fine. We're just gonna freaking rock it in cinema. That was a we're gonna, bad choice. <laughs> we're gonna rock. We're no no longer gonna worship our emperor. But you know we're gonna worship hard work, and our movies are gonna be awesome, and Technology our shoes are gonna, be, gonna awesome. be awesome. Our uh, our cameras are gonna take over the world. All my cameras I shoot on are Sony. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, Kodak's dead. It's just how it is. So yeah, so Patrick, Japan. Patrick, we do have one more question though. Who? Oh dear! If you can equate this movie Ooh. to a beer, oh yes, I've already done mine. Mine is <laughs> the, the Suntory whiskey Tokari, but yours is what's yours? To me, it needs to be, and this is where I'm going to struggle to actually assign it to a drink. Mm-hmm. But it's complicated, and you wouldn't initially be like, "This is." super easy to drink but then you learn you know you kind of love it so i think an ipa is not not off for this right not everyone likes an ipa Mm -hmm. it can be you know there's a lot of taste there Mm -hmm. uh so let's let's say it's like a double ipa Ooh, Ooh, good one because it's expensive it's fancy and it's yes. still that's it's a good, little Pat. fancy. It's, okay, you, you I'm with you now. Be willing to get in there. Triceratops. hops. Triceratops hops is good, but it's uh, Nikasi doesn't. Nikasi sounds Japanese. Oh, Nikasi here we go. does we're getting, sound good. We're getting there. Nikasi Tricera hops does sound pretty good because it's <laughs> old as hell. It's basically Godzilla. It's basically Godzilla, which, <laughs> by the way, what year the, did Godzilla come out? 1954, oh. same cast, and guess same who's the cast. guess who's the professor? Takeshi Shimura, the <gasps> same guy that's Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh it's gosh. all connected. We did it. We did it, folks. We win. End on a high note. <laughs> You're welcome, Kurosawa. We let <laughs> we you did win. Something. We did something. And that's our folks. Folks, if you want to be a true movie snob, you have to watch Seven Samurai. It's yes. not even a question. Please do. Like, you have to watch Citizen Kane first and Seven Samurai within your first 10 viewings because it's it influences so many movies. It's ridiculous. I mean, especially if you like action movies. Oh, right? It is action. the template for all Western. almost all action movies. Uh anything where like the, the 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 underdog beats the more powerful whatever. It's it's it's, it's Avatar post it's, Rambo one. It's Rambo, right. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's, if it's part you know, first blood part two. That's then right. You're in. You're in this territory. You're oh staying in a my poor gosh! Village. This is so good. This is a, literally a two-hour right. podcast, but it's fine. Um, yeah, Patrick, cut that, cut that, cut that. thank you for the time. This has been great. Hey, thanks for having me. This thanks has been for coming, awesome. Pat. This has been a lot of fun. I enjoy these two hours because this has been nothing but fun. It's and I can't wait. Pleasure. When you come down to Oregon, Pat, guess what? We're doing this live with y'all. Mm-hmm. We'll be in this. I'll be in the <sighs> studio I'm so with some weird, strange drink. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. Anyways, okay, we love you all. Keep watching good movies. Good movies change the way you view the world. We believe in it. Uh, thanks for watching How to Be a Movie Snob. This is Seth. Mariah. And special guest. 
hat. Hey. <laughs> and how to be a movie snob. I, like I love it. All right, guys. Till next time. Keep watching. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.